You know that guy that would pay a prostitute just to have a conversation with her? Everything has to be by the book. So with the melancholy, you don't really know what to expect, whether it's going to be farming or feasting. Self-understanding is only one benefit gained from the theory of the four basic temperaments. It also helps you understand other people better, particularly those who are closest to you. Looking at the melancholies and their perception and behavior towards sex, the melancholies are very analytical self-sacrificing, gifted with very sensitive emotional nature. The melancholy is not the type that can be spontaneous when it comes to having sex. In fact, <laughs> everything is planned out. You know, you know they do anything by accident. He's the type that will set a candlelight, romantic music, good perfumes, and he believes in building emotional connection before anything can happen. You know that guy that would pay a prostitute just to have a conversation with her. <laughs> you know, now when you pay a prostitute and he goes into the room, the lady is like, you know, doing all of her thing, trying to take off her clothes, you know, all of those things they do. And he's just there seated in one corner looking at her. And the next thing he ushers her to come and sit close to him. And he begins to ask her a question of like, but why are you into this kind of business? Do you ever see yourself stopping this kind of business. And the call lady will be like, wait a minute, am I here to get schooled or am I here to have this conversation? What's going on? <laughs> because for a melancholy, even though he fancies her and he really wants to do that, but he can't even bring himself to just spontaneously do it until he builds that level of emotional connection before he's able to carry out the act. You know, so everything has to be by the book. I once saw a movie that has a melancholy in it and this guy, he was so critical, like it was difficult for him to select or choose a wife. It got to a point where people were now trying to hook him up. And this particular time he went out on a date and he went out with a list. <laughs> Like a list of things that need to be checked off, right? <laughs> so he would ask the lady a question and he would either cross the box or check it off. Like it was that bad. Well, a melancholy, actually, in my own thought, I think that a melancholy can be the perfect human being if only he is able to overcome that sense of perfectionism. Everything has to be perfect. If it is not perfect, we cannot do it. In fact, uh, let me draw a typical scenario for you. Imagine a situation where a melancholy man is all in the mood, he's all fired up, he wants to have sex and all of that. And then maybe he went to the bathroom to freshen up. And on his way back to the room to meet his wife, he sees maybe a cloth that was not properly hung or maybe that was lying on the floor just like that. Because to him, everything needs to be perfect. And that is like a turn off. He immediately goes cold and the wife will be like, what happened? So with the melancholy, you don't really know what to expect, whether it's going to be farming or feasting. The same goes to a melancholy woman. She might be in the mood and, you know, fired up and everything. The moment she perceives an order from her husband or maybe mouth order or anything, immediately she's turned off. She cannot swallow it. You know, everything has to be perfect. She can't imagine herself doing the do and perceiving a particular smell. She can't fit. <laughs> Unlike some other temperament that would just do it out of duty, the melancholies hardly do things out of duty. Everything has to be by the book. Like, you know, now you're going to need to do this thing, and so did they do, and so did they do, and we have to do it like that. So that is just the way the melancholy is. Normally, uh, every woman they experience these fluctuations of, you know, emotional instability. This minute she's hot, the next minute she's cold as ice, which affects our sex drive, right? But you see uh, with the melancholy is even more because it's like person already for the matter before it starts, if you get what I mean. A melancholy is very, very emotional. Little things trigger them. Very analytical people, very, very calculated. Okay, so that is why it's very important as a man for you to understand this theory of temperament so that if your wife, for example, she's a melancholy, she behaves in a certain manner. Instead of being receptive towards her, you begin to be more empathic, knowing fully well that, see, some of these things, she can't really help herself. That is just the way she is. <laughs> you understand? So it will help you understand her better and, you know, you begin to see her on a different light altogether. So instead of vexing, you know, go vex, my brother, you could just calm down, knowing fully well that that when it comes to weaknesses, when you begin to assert the weakness so much, you're not going to achieve anything by doing that. The person is going to recall back into himself 
especially the melancholies the moment you begin to point out their weaknesses like why are you always like this why are you doing this does he have to be like this he or she is going to just you know recall back they just go back into their shelf you might not be able to reach them so the best way to influence someone is you know accepting them knowing fully well that okay at this point i believe he's going to behave like this she's going to behave like this and but it's all right the moment she knows that you understand her weakness and you accept it then she will be willing to work on it in order to have a happier life with you Lest I forget this, no individual is just one temperament. It's always a combination of two at least. Some people even have up to three temperaments, like the tertiary temperament. But basically, you have the primary temperament. That is the one that is more obvious. For example, you can have a melancholy that has a combination of melancholy and choleric. So we call them melclo. You know, so they have the characteristics of the melancholy and the choleric, so they exhibit these characteristics. And if the male is higher on the spectrum, so you expect a more melancholy behaviors. For example, maybe 70 30 male clue. 70% melancholy, 30% choleric. So you see them having more of the melancholy traits. That is why it's very important for us to understand this. For example, if you know that a melancholy person has this character and that character, and if you do not know that the secondary temperament is kind of maybe not really secondary, maybe it's 50-50, because there are times that you can have 50% melancholy, 50% choleric, or 50% sanguine. Now, somehow the sanguine temperament is going to balance up the weakness, some of the weaknesses of the melancholy. So you see that you can have a male son and another male son whose behaviors are kind of different because of the percentage on the spectrum. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, right? So for example, a 50-50 male son is going to be a little bit more spontaneous than a 70-30 male son. What I'm trying to explain here is that when you have an individual who has 70% melancholy and just 30% sanguine or maybe 20% sanguine and then 10% of another temperament, now he has more of the traits of the melancholy being exhibited like it happens naturally because the person has more of the melancholy traits in him. If you have not seen the video about sanguines and how they behave towards sex, I'm going to leave the link in the description. Also, I'm going to leave it in the comment section. All right, so that you can see that if you have the time to get the book, you can get the book written by Tim Lahaye, Why You Act The Way You Do. Take your time to read it and over time, you can have a more comprehensive knowledge about the theory of temperament. Otherwise, you can see the video I made about the sanguine temperament and how they behave towards sex. Basically, what affects our behavior is the percentage of each of the temperament we have so if you have more of melancholy you're going to exhibit more of the melancholy traits if you have a more balanced temperament in the sense that you have 50% melancholy 50% choleric then it's going to be a little bit balanced because now the choleric is also strong in the spectrum and somehow it's going to balance off some of the weaknesses of the melancholy and like i always say no temperament is better than any other one the difference is that some have been able to identify their weaknesses work on them as such they become more productive and even almost more successful in every aspect of their lives do you agree with this theory <laughs> let me know what you think in the comment section and if you're a melancholy in the house please feel free to let us know some of the challenges you face and do you even really agree with this theory have you been able to work on some of your weaknesses let us know in the comments and i really love to read from every one of you i appreciate you for watching for all of my returning subscribers you guys rock you know i love you and for those seeing my face for the very first time i remain my humble self when this deal. thank you so much for watching this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and also check out the video i made about how sanguines behave towards sex is here on the screen you can click on it right now and i'll see you there